Hello everybody, welcome to TFS number 56. So, I spent about 3-4 hours writing and editing a short story, uh, Creepypasta, which I'll link to below. As such, I did not again have very much time to put terribly much thought into this broadcast here, but the show must go on. So I'm going to go through some bric-a-brac I was able to mull over earlier in the day. It regards our president, Donald Trump. And it comes from an article by Philip Giraldi, posted in the ONS Review. The interesting thing about Mr. Giraldi is that he is a former CIA man, if I'm remembering correctly. He's also a PhD holder, which kind of makes him a rather credible source for the sort of social commentary and criticism he makes, the investigation he does. Now, I am by no means somebody that thinks that Donald Trump is a terrible person or is a terrible president. I think that his policies have been good, have been bad, have been terrible, and all matter of other things depending. I don't think that as a whole, in general, his presidency has been a bad thing for the country. And you are all certainly welcome to disagree with me there. But that is my opinion, and I've stated it plainly. That being said, I do take strong umbrage with his recent belligerence in terms of seizing executive power or the attempts to do so, which I basically just learned about from Mr. Giraldi's article. So let's head on over there real quick. Right. <clears throat> Trump's dissent relates to two attempts by Congress to specifically rein in U.S. involvement in the Saudi Arabian aggression against Yemen and also to preempt a possible attempt to attack Iran. On the Yemen resolution, SJ Res 7, approved last March, the Senate voted 54 to 46 in favor, followed by the House passing the same resolution by a vote of 248 to 177. The Iran resolution, SJ Res 68, which had bipartisan support through a 55-45 vote in the Senate in February and a 227 to 186 vote in the House in March, finally reached the President's desk last Wednesday. Both resolutions were immediately vetoed by the President. The two resolutions would have limited Trump's ability to continue an armed conflict or go to war without specific authorization of Congress, which is already something that's technically supposed to be on the books as per the Constitution, I believe, uh, Article 8, Section something. Now, <clears throat> in characteristic fashion, Trump called the latest iteration on Iran very insulting and also criticized his Republican supporters Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky and Representative Matt Gates of Florida, accusing them of helping the Democrats in the lead up to the November's election. Now, I have a great respect for Rand Paul, the son of Ron Paul, the libertarian candidate. Even though I'm not a libertarian myself, I believe that these two gentlemen, in terms of understanding and promoting the spirit of the Constitution, have had rather impeccable records based on how they vote and the sort of rhetoric that they put forward. Now, let's continue. In an official statement of explaining his veto, Trump stated that the resolution implies that the president's constitutional authority to his military force is limited to defense of the United States and his forces against imminent attack. That is incorrect. We live in a hostile world of evolving threats, and the Constitution recognizes that the president must be able to anticipate our adversary's next moves and take swift and decisive action in response. Now, I understand the term commander-in-chief, but the commander-in-chief should also have counselors. And this is a very imperial sort of mindset, a sort of God complex. And it's not going to lead to wise decisions. I mean, even Alexander eventually petered out. To be sure, President Barack Obama and his Secretary of State Hillary Clinton contrived to attack Libya even though it in no way threatened the U.S. To do so, the mission was initially framed as humanitarian in nature, and NATO was subsequently involved in it, so it could be framed as a collective action against the country that posed a potential security threat to the Mediterranean region. So they at least put some, you know, dressing on the bloody thing. 
President George H.W. Bush and his son George W. likewise were careful to get the United Nations authorization for the use of force in two wars against Iraq, and the latter also relied on 2002's blanket authorization for the use of military force, AUMF, which permitted military action against the perpetrators of 9-11. The AUMF was later expanded to defectively include all terrorist groups. Most of those justifications were, of course, nonsense, frequently little more than contrivances based on fabricated intelligence to permit wars of aggression. And again, you know, if we're going after people that were responsible for 9-11, what precisely were we doing in Iraq? Kind of a very tenuous connection there is proof of what was just said. It's kind of just a carte blanche to do whatever you want, but at least it still attempts to put the dressings on it, eh? to prettify it, to put lipstick on the pig. Donald Trump's viewpoint on the authority of the president is somewhat less fastidious than even that. Though he has also cited the AUMF, he is currently involved in a litigation going to the Supreme Court over his claim of temporary absolute immunity. Regarding an admittedly politically motivated suit by the Manhattan District Attorney to obtain his tax records, he has similarly embraced the idea that he, as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, can use them as a resource to conduct his foreign policy, an idea possibly put into his head by his belligerent Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. Conceding that he has the power would grant him de facto authority to intervene anywhere in the world, anytime, based on any pretext. So God Emperor indeed. It also ignores the original War Powers Act in Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, which gives us the sole authority for declaring wars to Congress for very, very sound reasons, whatever you might think of Congress or the current members of Congress, at least having some limitations, some checks on the foibles of one man <laughs> is a wise decision. Given his propensity, and this is uh, kind of a character sketch that Mr. Giraldi makes of Donald Trump, that I don't know if I'm necessarily in agreement with that he's you know, wildly impulsive, but militaristically he does seem to kind of have a uh, enthusiastic, shall we say, approach to things. Given his propensity to seek military solutions and his belief that he has the absolute authority to do so, Trump has not hesitated to attack Syria several times in spite of there being no imminent threat and his act of war, war crime assassination of Iranian Major General Qasem Soleimani, in Iraq in January, nearly ignited an armed conflict with Iran. Indeed, though Trump has been engaged in maximum pressure, economic warfare against Iran for the past two years, he and his administration frequently claim that it is only being done to modify Iranian bad behavior. So there's a lot to mull over there in everything that I've just uh, presented to you. I think that anybody who understands America and how it functions would be alarmed, just as I was alarmed when I was in a Navy recruiter's office, and he informed me that that... Uh, the Constitution was just a piece of paper. <laughs> okay. I mean, yes, it is just a piece of paper, but it's a piece of paper that represents the ideas that we are supposed to uphold and that as servicemen, theoretically, we are supposed to protect and serve and promote. Now, this thing about the sanctions that was just mentioned in this very last paragraph. Okay. Sanctions, as far as I've understood, often do not cause shifts in behavior of political leaders because they do not affect political leaders as much as they affect the general populace. So, in essence, we are waging economic war on people in already poor countries and causing them grief, which kind of puts a damper on the whole idea of us as the good guys in the world. Now, I don't think that America is like this evil, evil thing, uh, but we have to watch what we're doing. Um, and... You're welcome to dissent in any way that you see fit. I wish I could make these longer, but at the moment, I have a very tight schedule. Uh, again, I would recommend uh, that y'all all check out my little scary story I just wrote if you'd like some further entertainment. Thanks so much for listening, everybody, and cheers. <laughs>